A good-for-nothing salaryman is transported to a magical world and decides to start doing business to this cheat hack. Sasaki gets ready for work, takes out the trash, and greets a college girl. At work, Kohei asks for help with the reports of he offers to handle it, letting Kohei focus on other tasks. A girl mentions a new cat, catching Sasaki's interest after which they watch cat videos online, and Sasaki says he prefers dogs. She invites Sasaki to eat out, but Sasaki declines because of budget issues, hoping she'll ask again. At home, the college girl greets him and he spends the evening watching pet videos. The next day, Sasaki visits a pet shop and is shocked by the high prices of cats and dogs, so he complains about his low salary but finds a cute bird and decides to take it home. He names it Peeps before it surprisingly speaks and claims to be a great star sage from another world. Surprised, Sasaki decides to team up with him so Peeps shares his powers, teleporting them to another world, Batrium. At work, Kohai asks how Sasaki arrived early despite train delays and suggests starting a business together, but Sasaki declines, mentioning his busy life with Peeps. Sasaki remembers his time in Peeps' world and the benefits of teleportation, and at the supermarket, he meets the college girl again and gives her a chocolate bar. Later, Sasaki sells products to Batrium's nobles, earning 400 million yen. He continues traveling between worlds, selling items and studying magic, and meets French. A chef who was fired, and they open a restaurant. Pete's questions Sasaki's reasons, and Sasaki explains his money problems. He practices magic and deals with work issues before meeting Hoshizaki, a water-controlling psychic, and learns about Japan's secret psychic organization. She introduces Sasaki to the organization, where he trains and gets a smartphone for missions. Sasaki's neighbor reveals her obsessive tendencies, making him cautious before he finds a surveillance device in his house installed as a loyalty test by the organization. He rarely lies down and decides to stay focused on his goal of a peaceful life in the other world. In the other world, Peeps and Sasaki are practicing magic. Peeps is impressed by Sasaki's progress with spells that usually take magicians decades to master. Sasaki credits his progress to the power Peeps shared with him and keeps track of his progress, noting that he learned healing and lightning spells today. Peeps suggests using a grimoire, explaining that Sasaki's phone can store enchantments. Much to Sasaki's surprise and later, Sasaki meets with Mark to negotiate the purchase of walkie-talkies. Mark is impressed and offers a good deal, showing interest in his products before telling him about tensions with a neighboring nation and advising him to stay cautious. They meet French outside the restaurant, and Sasaki pays him for his services and provides him with new recipes. Back in the modern world, Sasaki is awakened by a call from Hoshizaki about a mission and at work. She tells him off for not being prepared. Veterans greet Sasaki before they leave and the director briefs them on the mission to arrest unregistered psychic users, including one who attacked Hoshizaki. During the mission, they find the hideout empty before they're suddenly attacked by levitating objects, indicating the presence of high-level psychics. Sasaki and Hoshizaki defend themselves, with Sasaki assisting her with his water supply before a psychic girl suddenly appears, sparing Hoshizaki and telling Sasaki to reveal himself. He tries to negotiate and eventually uses a lightning spell to defeat hidden psychics. The girl offers him a truce and invites him to join her group, which he declines so she decides to retreat in the end. Sasaki reports to Akutsu, who apologizes for the danger after which Sasaki and Hoshizaki go out for dinner, where she reveals she's only 16 years old and on his way home. Sasaki runs into a strange levitating child who disappears through a portal, leaving him confused. At home, Sasaki surprises Peeps with the beef he wanted before thanking him for his help. Peeps starts eating, amazed by the taste, while Sasaki takes a picture and helps him clean up while talking about his first mission. He asks to learn a barrier spell, and Peeps suggests a healing spell too. Sasaki thinks it's urgent and asks to be taught after his meeting with Mark. Excited about a soft bed and French's food after training, Sasaki is surprised when the Viscount talks about war. He realizes Mark was right, and Mueller says the king ordered him to the front lines against the powerful Ogun Empire. Their army is twice as big, and if they reach the city, they will cause great damage. Mueller asks for Sasaki's help, but Sasaki wants to avoid wars and politics. However, Mueller says his items would be crucial in the war and asks for his exclusive services. Mueller explains the challenges of transporting supplies to the front lines 
and the impact on the economy before revealing the king's orders to build strongholds and feed the front lines, leaving him no choice but to obey. Sasaki suggests leaving the city to save his family, but Mueller mentions the Star Sage, a mage who maintained peace until his assassination led to the kingdom's decline, and says he plans to protect his people out of respect for the Star Sage, so Sasaki apologizes for his suggestion and agrees to provide goods, asking for a promise from Mueller. One month later, Sasaki learns of Mueller's death. Distracted at work, he is promoted but remains unsatisfied and at home. He finds peeps watching TV, and they discuss Mueller's death. Sasaki offers his support, and French reveals the city's instability before Mark informs him of a succession war between Mueller's sons, and they meet the butler, Sebastian, and Lady Elsa. Sebastian asks Sasaki for communication equipment, which he cautiously agrees to provide. At night, Sebastian makes a call, discussing how the plan is progressing well. He mentions that greedy nobles surround the two brothers, and now that Mueller is gone, their rivalry is increasing. Sasaki and Peeps have dinner with Elsa, who praises their food. Sasaki thanks her, reflecting on French's cooking, and Elsa is impressed with Peeps and asks to pet him. Sasaki agrees, and Peeps enjoys it, until she accidentally hits his eye, making him scream. Elsa is shocked, thinking he spoke, but Sasaki tries to cover it up before Mark suddenly appears, telling them to return to the castle. At the castle, Sebastian presents her brother's bloodied swords found in the forest. Elsa is shocked, and Sasaki asks what happened. Sebastian says they don't know, but it looks like a brutal battle happened, so they must fear the worst. With her father and brothers gone, Sebastian tells Elsa she must take over as head of the family, but Sasaki thinks it's not the right time, so Sebastian insists, saying the family will dissolve otherwise. Elsa feels pressured and accepts, while Sebastian promises to support her. Returning from the castle, they see people evacuating. Mark explains that the king's forces were defeated and attacks on nearby regions have begun. He plans to take Elsa to the capital for safety and asks Sasaki to join them, but Sasaki declines. Mark feels bad for Elsa, whose first duty is to abandon her family's lands and later, Sasaki and Peeps watch the sunset. Peeps makes a request, and Sasaki agrees to help turn the tide of the war. Peeps thanks him, and they head to the enemy camp which Peeps eliminates with a single spell, impressing Sasaki. A red beam breaks Peeps' barrier, separating them before a girl appears, and Sasaki watches as Peeps fights her. Mueller and Adonis arrive, surprising Sasaki after which they help fight off an elite orc, and Peeps reveals his true identity as the Star Sage, so they agree to keep it a secret, and Mueller is reunited with his family. Elsa approaches Sasaki and thanks him before embarrassingly running away. At school, Otonari notices Sasaki has been absent for days, which is unusual and while walking home, she finds a body and the police arrive to investigate. She overhears officers mentioning that Sasaki and Hoshizaki will handle it. Sasaki returns home. Realizing days passed while he was in the other world, they review their actions, having ended a war and helped with Mueller's succession. As a reward, Mueller became an Earl and Royal Guard, managing Adonis's funds. Hoshizaki arrives, scolding Sasaki for not leaving a note. On a mission to recruit a psychic high school student with fire control powers, they observe him being bullied before Sasaki suggests contacting him alone to avoid hurting his self-esteem. But Hoshizaki devises her own plan. In a cafe, Sasaki spots the boy with a girl who looks familiar. The bullies confront them, and the boy uses his power, accidentally hitting a plane as Sasaki raises a barrier to protect them. Realizing the girl is Hoshizaki, who explains her recruitment plan, and they put everyone to sleep. Suddenly, a strange girl attacks the barrier so Hoshizaki and Sasaki prepare to leave, recognizing the girl as a magical girl before she reveals her intention to kill psychics and attacks Hoshizaki, who is knocked out. Shizuka Futari, another psychic, arrives to help so Sasaki distracts the girl while Shizuka attacks, but the girl reveals she killed the fairies who made her a magical girl and uses a portal to leave after disclosing that she hates psychics because they killed her family. Hashizaki and the boy rest in a hotel while Sasaki thanks Shizuka for her help. Shizuka wants to join their team, but Sasaki says he can't make that decision so she asks to talk to his boss, showing interest in him despite him saying he's ordinary. Shizuka points out his abilities, thinking he's hiding something, and Sasaki realizes she's figured him out so she promises to keep his secret if he helps her. Akatsu calls Sasaki, who explains their encounter with a magical girl, 
and mentions Shizuka's job request, so he agrees to arrange an interview for her. They return to the department, and Sasaki stops by a store where Shizuka compliments his choice of pickled plums. Outside, Hoshizaki comments on Sasaki's closeness with Shizuka, noting the danger she poses as an A-ranked psychic who drains life energy and can heal quickly. They meet Akatsu, who talks about the boy's care and the cameras before she demands the cameras be removed and Sasaki offers Akatsu a pickled plum, surprising him with its taste. At home, Sasaki encounters Shizuka, who asks to stay the night, revealing she's been spying on him. She suggests a deal involving her fortune, tempting Sasaki, but he asks for time to decide. Peeps and Sasaki discuss this, considering Shizuka's connections to buy and sell valuable items from the fairy world before Akatsu arrives, questioning Shizuka's intentions. She asks to assist the department, and Akatsu places her under Sasaki's supervision, promoting him. Sasaki and Shizuka celebrate with drinks and he thanks her for the gift, sharing it with everyone. He asks Shizuka to do her best, hinting at recruiting her former companions before Hoshizaki joins them, thanking Sasaki for saving her, and offers him homemade eggs, which he enjoys immediately. She teases Hoshizaki, who denies being jealous but feels uncomfortable seeing them close. In the other world, the king gathers nobles to discuss their conflict with the empire, worried about their future. To ensure prosperity, he declares that all his successors will have equal influence in state affairs, with the greatest contributor named Hare in five years. Mark's business is going well, but a carriage nearly hits him. A man accuses them of hitting Count Dietrich's carriage. Mark's companion recognizes Herman inside. Sasaki, preparing to sell goods to him, receives a message from Mueller and heads to his mansion. Mueller tells Sasaki and Peeps about the king's new policy, causing the successors to fight for the throne. Peeps thinks it's too sudden, and Mueller advises Sasaki to leave for his safety due to the chaos, but Sasaki decides to stay. A servant announces a message from Herman's company. Mark is imprisoned for insulting Dietrich, but it's a setup. Sasaki learns Mark's success threatened Herman, who plotted with Dietrich to remove him and decides to help Mark. Mueller gives him a knife to act as his representative and Sasaki visits Mark in prison, heals him with magic, and proposes to Dietrich through the guard that working with Mark would be more profitable. The guard agrees but finds it ridiculous after which Sasaki meets Joseph from the company, proposing a business deal involving his products, which Joseph agrees to. Peeps suggests investing in gold for profit, so Sasaki prepares to store gold bars. Elsa, worried about Mark, visits Sasaki, who reassures her before Peeps accidentally reveals he can talk, and they explain his special abilities to Elsa, who agrees to keep it secret. That evening, Peeps returns them to Sasaki's world, where they discover Elsa has followed them. In the magical realm, Elsa has disappeared, causing Mueller to fret. Shizuka is amazed to discover humans there, which leads Elsa to question who she is. Initially, Sasaki wants to speak privately with Elsa, but Shizuka insists on joining. Worried that Shizuka might uncover his lies, Sasaki struggles to hide the truth about the other world. However, Peeps reveals that she can't understand their language due to magic. Elsa accuses Sasaki of being involved in Mark's capture and his recent transport of gold. Sasaki denies this, explaining the gold is meant to help rescue Mark before reassuring her of his loyalty to her father and his determination to save Mark, despite Shizuka's behavior, which prompts Peeps to step in with a restraining curse. Admitting defeat, Shizuka backs down, and Sasaki urges Elsa to return home, but she insists on immediate answers. He decides to show her Tokyo, gradually earning her trust by revealing his interest in her world and desire for peace. He get to contribute. Shizuka arranges a ferry ride and provides kimonos for their city tour. However, the outing attracts unwanted attention from reporters, and Elsa's magic is accidentally revealed. In a meeting with Akatsu, they start getting questioned about Shizuka and Elsa's involvement before she's assigned a mission. Later, Elsa says she wants to learn more about Sasaki's world, so Peeps suggests that they explore even more. As Elsa learns, Shizuka finalizes payment with Sasaki before he takes Elsa back to her realm. French brings food to Mark in prison using Mueller's knife, as requested by Sasaki to boost Mark's morale with his cooking. At the Viscount's mansion, Elsa apologizes to her father, who is relieved to see her safe. Mueller hasn't made any progress with Mark's situation when a maid announces a visitor, prompting Elsa to listen in. 
Kai, Elsa's brother, appears, advising her not to disappear again. The visitor is Herman, apologizing for Mark's trouble. Despite Mueller's reassurances, Herman reveals Dietrich's decision to execute Mark, declaring that he should face the consequences. Mueller decides to negotiate with Dietrich using money for a delay, while Sasaki thinks about Dietrich's harshness. Mueller reveals their long-standing conflict with Dietrich and agrees to Sasaki going with him to the meeting. In the carriage, Sasaki explains his indirect problem-solving approach and at Dietrich's mansion, they meet with Dietrich, who tells them that Mark's fate is sealed. Sasaki gives Dietrich a gift, impressing him before he proposes that if Sasaki sells his goods to him, Mark will be spared. Mueller objects, but Dietrich insists on executing him. Sasaki asks for time to consider and is given a month. Later, Mueller apologizes for involving Sasaki, who says saving Mark is their top priority before French rushes in, distressed about Mark's execution, so Sasaki requests time to plan. Sasaki tells Miller about his plan, asking for help for a task involving flying in exchange for code beef. Meanwhile, Dietrich discusses what happened with Herman, waiting for Sasaki's response. Sasaki prepares to move his goods to set up a new trading company, using them as security. He plans a larger delivery and meets Joseph, accompanied by Matisse, looking for advice on a loan matter. Back in Sasaki's world, Otonari overhears him, questioning his late work. Sasaki leaves after a call from Shizuka, while Elsa frets about her father but is reassured by Kay as the carriage arrives with Mueller and Maximilian. Herman meets with Dietrich, unaware of Sasaki's decision-making and wonders what they'll do before Dietrich receives a letter and starts smiling. French seems worried, but Sasaki advises him to stay calm before Dietrich arrives with Mark, asking why Sasaki chose the restaurant. Sasaki, since he owns the place, he suggests they talk over a meal so Sasaki introduces French as a cook and asks about Mark's location. Dietrich reveals Mark is in the carriage, offering to release him if they agree or take him to execution otherwise. Wondering where Mueller is, Dietrich is surprised when Mueller arrives with Prince Adonis. They gather, and Sasaki tells French to start cooking. Dietrich asks why Adonis is there, leading to a casual conversation about the kingdom's future. Thankful for Adonis' support, Sasaki offers compensation for Mark's mistakes, refusing Dietrich's demand to sell directly to him. Dietrich, valuing Mark's dignity, demands a payment of a thousand gold coins, which the Sasaki agrees to, suggesting a down payment and promising to pay the rest soon. Dietrich doubts this, but Sasaki convinces him of Mark's future value, convincing him to release Mark. Herman protests, but Dietrich ignores him before Joseph arrives unexpectedly, explaining how he helped with Dietrich's debt, so Sasaki shares his plan for a new trading company run by Mark, exciting everyone about the future. Grateful for Joseph's help, Sasaki and Mark look forward to working together. Later, Pete praises Sasaki's clever strategy. Impressed by his careful planning and Sasaki, explains how he used Adonis's influence and learned about Dietrich's financial problems. As he's returning home, Sasaki suddenly gets a call from Shizuka, who needs his help. Sasaki goes to Shizuka's apartment and finds it in ruins. While searching for her, a group attacks, but Peeps shields them. Sasaki eventually finds Shizuka hiding, and after he tends to her wound, she expresses admiration for his skills and promises not to reveal his powers to the Bureau, proving her loyalty by showing a curse mark. The attackers, sent by Shizuka's former organization, continue their assault as Shizuka reveals that one of their targets who was assigned by Akatsu is among them. Despite not being certain about their motives, she's determined to face them. The leader of Shizuka's former group appears, and she's afraid because they're outmatched and senses power to materialize his thoughts is very dangerous. He demands Shizuka's return, but she refuses. In retaliation, he summons a duplicate of her to eliminate her. Sasaki realizes that fighting the duplicate is useless, so he and Peeps prepare to defeat it together. Peeps agrees, surprising the leader with his ability to communicate. As they gear up to leave, the leader attacks with grenades. Quick action from Peeps saves them, leaving Sasaki curious about how Peeps knew they were explosives. After stopping them, they confront the leader, who summons various different beings. Peeps' abilities surprise him, and eventually, he gives in allowing Shizuka to leave so Sasaki negotiates with him to ensure her safety. He asks the leader to inform the Bureau that Shizuka has cut ties with his organization and requests secrecy about his abilities in exchange for peaceful relations. 
The leader agrees, and Shizuka offers her help, even agreeing to an odd request for refined sugar, but Sasaki suddenly gets a call from the bureau, telling them to return. A helicopter arrives to pick Shizuka and Sasaki up, and as they near the bureau, they hear about a sudden attack by the magical girl, who has brought a friend this time. Earlier, Sasaki tells Peeps to stay home as the incident is labeled as a terrorist attack. Dodging an energy beam, Sasaki remembers the girl's dislike for psychics. Despite landing safely, he wishes Peeps was with them. Realizing his teleportation ability could have swiftly resolved the situation by placing Shizuka next to the girls. However, he understands the need to keep Peeps' abilities hidden from the Bureau. Inside the building, Hoshizaki and other agents are having a useless firefight with the girls, unable to breach their strong barrier. Monitoring from a control room, Akutsu acknowledges the barrier's effectiveness but notices that Sasaki's arrived. Shizuka asks about Sasaki's plan and after thinking about it, he suggests using water pressure to force the girls to lower their barrier. Shizuka questions if he can use his powers inside their barrier, prompting Sasaki to weigh the required proximity. Despite the risk, they agree to try the plan. Sasaki encourages Shizuka to capture one girl which will make the other one serene. While she finds his request challenging, he says her role is important in saving the Bureau. Noticing Akutsu's camera, Sasaki signals he's ready, leading Akutsu to order an attack. They begin their attack with Shizuka using her water manipulation against the girls. Taking the opportunity, Sasaki invokes his spell, flooding the barrier. As they start drowning, the girls try to create openings, but Sasaki counters with more water, freezing their attempts. As the water level rises, Shizuka takes advantage of a gap in the barrier, capturing one of the girls from behind. The blonde girl angrily attacks Sasaki with energy, but he blocks it with ice so they retreat through a portal, promising revenge. The agents point guns at Shizuka, so Sasaki quickly explains she's an ally. Later, Peeps tells him that the time difference between their world and the other realm is decreasing and it'll become equal in six months. Meanwhile, a boy appears in front of Otonari and says he's a demon and she'll fight angels for him.